I get you something? Some coffee or a beer? What I want to do is I want to undo the last 24 hours. Because that's how long it took for my whole life to collapse. You marry someone, you fall in love, you have a family with them, and then, then it's like you don't even know them. I feel like such a fool, Biz. No, no, TC, none of this is your fault. Eve lied to you over and over. You know, I, I think in time I probably could have dealt with her drug addiction and, and drinking, but to find out that she had a baby with Julian Crane. I'm not sure why she never told you about it. And then on top of that, to find out that Eve was the driver of the car that hit me then, and that it wasn't Julian. Liz, it's just too much. I, I've, I've lost my wife, I've lost my family, I've lost everything. No, Tissy. That's not true. You still have your daughters. And you have me. Seems like everything that is dear to me has been taken away from me. I'm sorry, DC. I never should have brought Aunt Irma here. I just had no idea that she knew all the horrible details about Eve's sordid past. Liz, it's not your fault, okay? Eve is responsible for all this. It's her fault. <laughs> Whitney and Chad remind me of me and TC way back when. Because I'll never have that with him again. At least she's found happiness with a man she loves. I've managed to destroy everything else in her life, but she's still got Chad. Not for long, Eve. Not once they find out he's our son. And their half-brother and sister. That's good, because... He'll be there for her when I tell her that I was the one driving the car that hit T.C. all those years ago. You know, uh, Whitney's still so upset from everything else she's learned about the past. Why not wait a little with this? No. I have to tell her before she hears it from someone else. That would just make it worse for her. If you need me, I'll be with Fox. Thank you, Julie. I gather you haven't told Whitney the truth yet. No. And despite her smile, she's barely keeping it together after hearing her mother's horrible news. Her love for Chad is the only thing that's keeping her going. When she finds out that he's her half-brother, it's gonna destroy the only good thing left in her life. How do I do that? I don't know. You haven't told Dr. Russell yet either, have you? No, it seems that neither of us can bring ourselves to hurt the women we love. Well, we're gonna have to. And soon, because they're planning a wedding together. I managed to convince him to stop sleeping with her until after the wedding. I said, oh, you know what'll make your wedding night more special? What if they... What if they change their mind? What if they don't use protection and she ends up getting pregnant? Can you think of anything worse? Hey. Hey. How are you feeling? Never better. Mm. I still can't believe you're actually having twins. Mm. <gasps> what, what are you talking about, twins? The specialist told Teresa she's having twins. I guess you missed it when you examined her. Teresa, you can't possibly be carrying twins. What? What do you mean, why not? I just leave us with no food, no water, no 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 equipment. Just leave us here to die. Because he was working for Alistair all along. Oh, so it seems. What are we gonna do? I don't care. I lost Luis when that temple exploded. My father killed him just like he said he would. I might as well be dead too. You can't talk like that. You can't give up. We can't give up. We can't let Alistair win. 
We will find a way out of this jungle. Fort Arena should be west of here, and judging by this sun, west is this way. Well, then, let's keep walking. Okay. Come on, Sheridan, walk with me. I'm not going. Yes, you are. No. I want to die here in the jungle. I want to be with Louise. Now that the others have been taken care of, what do you want to do with the girl? As I said, just keep her handy. If by some miracle Martin, Catherine, and Sheridan find their way out of the jungle alive, we may need Paloma as bait again. Will do, boss. But well, once this is all over, do you think I could have her? <laughs> Why not? I'm feeling generous now that Luis Lopez Fitzgerald is dead. And I told you, you'd be well rewarded for your good work. Paloma's yours as of now. Thanks, boss. But in case we need her, don't mar that pretty face. Oh, don't worry, boss. <laughs> It's not a pretty little face I'm interested in. <laughs> a man after my own heart. That's not how you, you honor Luis's memory. He'd want you to live. Oh, Luis. Now, I know, I know that you think that you'll never get through this, but, but Sheridan, you will. You're going to have to trust me on this one. And after a while, you'll be able to start focusing on the good memories. You know, and that'll make you want to keep living. Because, in a way, you're living keep Luis's memory alive right here. You'll always be alive in my heart. Of course you will. Now please come with us for Luis. We'll help you through this and we'll help each other. He's still back there under all those rocks and rubble. I'll tell you what. We'll come back with a search party and the right tools and We'll find Luis's body. We'll give him a proper burial. But we can't do that unless we save ourselves first. I want to take him home. I want to bring him back to Harmony. To his mother. I don't want to bury him here where... He doesn't know anybody who loves him is nearby. Whatever you want. Come on, just give me your hand. Gotcha. Chad and Whitney have a baby. It will destroy whatever's left of the Russell family. TC and Whitney will never forgive Eve, and she will never forgive herself. Well, it doesn't seem like Whitney or Coach Russell are going to forgive her for any of the other stuff either. No, it doesn't. And now, unfortunately, Whitney's about to hear another horrible secret from her mother's past. There's more? Eve was the one driving my car the night that TC was injured. I thought you said it was you. We were both very drunk. Eve didn't remember any of it, and I tried to take the blame for it all these years, and then suddenly she remembered, and she... Refuse to keep any more secrets from T.C. Oh, I'll bet that didn't go over well. Well, that's an understatement. And now she's determined to tell Whitney the truth before she hears it from someone else. How much more can that family take? I don't know. But everything else will pale when they find out that... Whitney's been sleeping with her own brother. I 
think you're right. Eve, why is it impossible for Teresa to be carrying twins? Well, I examined her myself. I, I did a sonogram. And even though we implanted several embryos, only one successfully took. Does this mean there's something wrong with the baby? No, no, there can't be, because Dr. Morrow said that they were doing fine. Well, then I'm sure they are. I just don't understand how she could be carrying more than one. But she is. I mean, Dr. Morrow said so. Honey, what? I don't know what's going I, on. I don't know. There's got to be a logical explanation to this. Eve, what, 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 what has happened here? How, how could Teresa be pregnant with twins and she wasn't before? I have no idea. I have an idea. It's a beautiful day. Why don't I try and take your mind off of everything that's happened? Just for a little while. You know, I could pack a picnic lunch. We could grab a bottle of wine and drive up to the beach. You know, we could chase the waves and build sandcastles. What do you think? Sounds like fun. Oh, yes, it would be. And fun is exactly what you need to get these knots out of your shoulders. Liz, I, I would like to, but I, I can't do that. Oh, of course you can. No, Liz, I'm a married man, and I just can't pretend like I'm not. But you see, Eve has already made a mockery of your marriage vows. Yeah, but I'm not going to lower myself to her standards. I mean, what would Father Lonigan think? Father Lonigan is a compassionate man. I don't think that he'd want to see you locked up here in the house. It's just a picnic. Liz, I can't. Just, no. Okay. How about tomorrow? No. Not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, not ever. Given the current circumstances, I don't think this situation should continue. What situation? Liz, we slept together once. It was great. I'm not blaming you. I was a willing participant, but I, I can't be tempted again. I mean, what kind of example is that going to set for Whitney and Simone? TC, we're consenting adults, and your marriage to Eve is over. But not in the eyes of the church, Liz. This is not right. I, I can't do this, Liz. You need to leave my house, and you just need to leave now. After everything that Eve has done, how can you let her keep you from moving on with your life? Liz, she's not. I am. <laughs> what, out of, out of some misguided sense of morality? Liz, my whole life just exploded. I need some time to deal with this. Yes, but you don't have to do it alone. Yes, I do, Liz. I am not in any shape to be sharing my life with someone. I need to work through this. And, and I can't be jumping into another relationship. That's not going to help. Okay, you know, we don't need to rush into anything. You know, I'll just stay here and, and help you with the cooking and, and help out around here and help you with Whitney and Simone. Liz, we both know that's not going to work. It's going to be too confusing for me, for the girls, for everyone. It would just be best if you just, just leave. TC. Liz, please don't make this more difficult than it is. Please, just pack your bags and go. Dr. Russell, help us out here. I mean, would you, there has to be some explanation, right? Maybe Dr. Morrow misread the sonogram. Well, he said he saw it on the screen. I mean, he said there were two amniotic sacs, there were two babies. He said he even heard the two heartbeats, right? Yes, he did. Well, that's not what I saw when I examined you right after the implant. There was only one embryo. Okay, well, this is crazy. I mean, one couldn't have just grown. All right, all right <laughs> we're going to find out what happened here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> is it possible that when you first examined Teresa, you made a mistake? That, that uh, the twins weren't obvious yet? Ethan, I've been a doctor for a long time, and I have never yet missed a multiple pregnancy. And with an implant? I am specifically looking for just that possibility. But there doesn't seem to be any other explanation. Oh, 
Uh, no, I... Unless... No. I... No. No. Oh, Eve. Please, just listen. Whatever it is, please just tell us. Teresa, have you been intimate with someone since the implantation? Honey, have you had sex with anyone since the procedure? It wouldn't matter if I had sex or not. I was already pregnant. Well, yes, you were, but it is possible for a woman to become pregnant with two different babies from two different fathers. It is? Yes, it's called superfecundation. And it happens when a woman ovulates more than one egg at a time and then has sex with more than one partner during her fertile period. It's very rare, but it's well documented. One egg is fertilized by sperm from one man and the other egg is fertilized by sperm from the other man. But I didn't have sex to get pregnant. I was implanted. That's true, honey, and that's why I was reluctant to even bring it up. But if you ovulated at about the same time that you were implanted with Ethan and Gwen's embryo, hey, you could have gotten pregnant with your own fetus as well as theirs. Oh, my God. In which case, it might not have been present when I did the sonogram, or it might have been too new to show up and the heartbeat too faint for me to hear. Oh, my God. You had sex with someone after the procedure, didn't you? Teresa, you slept with someone after you tricked the doctors into implanting you instead of our real surrogate? You knew, you very well knew how fragile that implant was, but you just didn't care, did you? Honey, you need to take it easy you right now. You gotta be kidding me if I'm gonna take it easy right now, all right? Who was it, Teresa? Who did you sleep with? Who did you sleep with? Was it you? Absolutely not. What did you do? What did you do? Did you just pick someone up off the street, Teresa? You deliberately put my baby at risk and you don't tell me! Who did you sleep with? Who fucked you up, huh? Who was it? Paloma's the best payment I've ever got. You deserve it, Nick. One down, three to go. You're doing excellent work. But remember what I said about being careful with Paloma. We may still need her if our misguided trio find their way out of the jungle. I won't mess her up, boss. But as far as the others are concerned, don't worry. There's no way they're gonna make it out of the jungle alive. Not after the arrangements I've made. What sort of arrangements? I'll tell you all the gory details as soon as I know I'm successful. If that's acceptable, sir. I only like good surprises, Nick. Trust me then, sir, you'll love this one. It's big, it's bold, and it's extremely painful. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Please. Why are we cursed? Why can't it ever work out? You have to keep focused, Sheridan. I want to go back to Egypt. What? That's where it all started. If I could just go back, then maybe I could undo this curse that we have on us. But she needs to rest a little bit. Here, sit here. She's dehydrated. Yeah, we all are. Listen, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna try and find that stream and fill up the water. Oh, please, please don't be gone long. I won't. I promise. Okay. Come here, darling. You're gonna get through this. I know it doesn't seem like it right now, but you will. I promise. It's just gonna take a little time. Time. More time. Another time, another lifetime. God, it's 
Oh, that's just the one. <sighs> Sheridan, look at me. Focus. Who am I? You're Mrs. Wheeler. Yes, that's right. Where are we? We're in the jungle. Lost, and Luis is dead. Shh. You said something about another lifetime. What did you mean? You're gonna think I'm hallucinating or crazy, but I'm not. Luis and I have known each other before. We loved each other before. In other lifetimes. You don't believe me. Oh, no, I do, I do believe you. Tell me about one of them, please. The first one I remember, Luis and I were in ancient Egypt. It was Cleopatra, and he, he was Mark Antony. Then he was the most handsome pirate. I was the governor's daughter. He gave me a necklace that his father gave to his mother, and he swore that we would always be together. Then we were on the Titanic together. Time after time, something or someone always tore us apart. We were cursed. I just thought, I, we both thought, the one that we were finally going to have our happily ever after. But my father killed him. Oh, Alistair is a most vicious and cruel man. No. No. My father is, is beyond cruel. He's evil. I hate him. I, I want him to die. Sheridan, you have to call him down. I want to kill him myself. <laughs> Sheridan, I, I want him to have a long, slow, excruciating death. I want to make sure that he dies in such a... Oh! Sheridan, because, yes. Because the ground gave way. She was upset. She was pacing back and forth, and the ground gave way. No, no, it's a trap dug for an animal. Or for us. God. Sheridan, can you hear me? I tried that, but there's no answer. It's so dark in there. I can't see anything. Oh, my God, I hope the fall didn't kill her. Martin, she's my baby. I can't lose her again. Now, I don't know if this beam is strong enough. That's the only thing that the guy you... didn't take from us. Sheridan! She's not moving. Oh, God, please. Oh, God, please, please, don't, don't let her be dead. You no, know, she's not moving, but something else down there is. Oh, my God! Oh! You slut! Like 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 I hate you! Come on. Are you okay? All right, it's over. It's over. No, Ethan, it is not over. It is never over with her. Why don't you let me out here? I want to know the truth. Honey, I know how you feel. I know you're angry, but it's not helping, okay? We're going to get to the bottom of this, but you have to calm down. Oh, yeah. We are so going to get to the bottom of this because I don't know exactly how and I don't know exactly what, but that crazy bitch has tried to screw up my life again. What the hell am I doing? Here I am, alone, drinking in the middle of the day. I'm better than this. What happened, Ian? We had a perfect life. And then you just took it all away. It wasn't enough that you were driving drunk with your lover and you crashed into my car and ruined my knee? You took away my tennis dreams. That wasn't enough, was it? You had to worm your way into my life. You had to make me love you. It's like you're some demon. You've done everything to destroy me mentally, physically, and spiritually. 
Liz is right. You're nothing but a godless whore. Damn you, E. What kind of hold do you have on TC? He finally knows the truth and he still can't let you go? to having everything I wanted. So close to having him. You weren't even in the house and you managed to get in the way. Well, this isn't over, Eve. Not by a long shot. Oh, I swear. One day, I will get my revenge. Packing as fast as I can, TC. I made a mistake, Liz. Can you forgive me? What? You were right about Eve. She is a lying whore. And I'm through with her. I don't want to put my life on hold anymore. I want you to stay. Would you stay in my house, stay in my room, and stay in my bed? I want you. I want you to, TC. Oh, God, I tried this time, Ethan. You know, I really, really did. I gave her the benefit of every doubt. And look where it got me. Look where it's gotten hey, me. We don't, we don't know what's going on yet, okay? Oh, I do. I mean, this is classic Teresa. She's pulled another fast one yet again. Just like when she locked our surrogate in the closet and took her place. Just like in Los Angeles when she killed our little Sarah. No, this is yet another plot and scheme by Teresa. Gwen, trust me, honey. We'll get this all sorted out. I bet that when we get this sorted out, that Teresa is going to wind up with two babies, and all I'm going to have is a nursery full of furniture and baby clothes that oh, are never going to be Stop, used. stop. My money's on Gwen, Teresa. Somehow you pulled a fast one. I don't know what you're talking about, Fox. Yes, you do, Teresa. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You've got guilt written all over your face. What did you do? What did you do, Teresa? Give Tell me, Teresa. Give her a break, Fox. Come on. Come here. Look, Teresa, I'm sorry, but you've really done it this time. You do know that. I mean, either you're pregnant with twins that time you seduced Ethan, or you never miscarried Ethan and Quinn's implant, and you're also pregnant with yours and Ethan's baby. Either way, this whole thing is a mess. Don't remind me. Well, you're going to have to fess up to what you did eventually. You might as well do it now. I'm not telling anyone anything yet, and you can't either. I just need to figure out the best way to deal with this. Teresa. <sighs> Let's just figure... Whitney. Honey, can I, I please have a word with you in private? You and I have nothing to say to each other, Mother. Yes, we do, and it's very important. Let go of me. I know that the timing stinks, honey, but there's something else that you need to know about my past, and I want to tell you before anyone else does. Oh, great. Oh, this is just great. Let me guess, you had an affair with Father Lonigan, too? Stop it, Whitney. I am the one who was driving the car that hit your father all those years ago. What? I'm the one who, who ruined your father's tennis career. No. I, Mom, no. Honey, I, I didn't even remember the accident, and it just all came back to Well, how very convenient of you to forget after all these years. Whitney, I told your mother that I was the one driving, not her, that her memory was wrong. I'm to blame. Oh, uh, Julian, you're always to blame. I mean, the both of you two are disgusting. You'd say anything to protect her, wouldn't you? Okay, now that you're being honest all of a sudden, is there anything else? Hmm? I mean, are there any more secrets that you want to go ahead and get out? Any more lies that you've been living your whole life? No, baby. I can't even believe we share the same blood. I mean, I wish any other woman was my mother. 
anyone but you. Yeah. Sheridan! Sheridan! Shelby, we gotta get her out of there. We've gotta do something. If she's not dead already, those snakes are gonna kill her. If I can find a strong enough vine, then I can lower myself down and I can carry her back up. Oh, now, meanwhile, Hurry. listen, listen. Keep yelling out to her. Right. If she got unconscious from the fall, then maybe she'll come too. Okay. Right? Take this too. Be careful. Okay, hurry, Mark. Sheridan, can you hear me? Sheridan. 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 Sheridan, don't worry. We're going to get you out of there. Sheridan. Sheridan, it's going to be all right. Mr. Wheeler is going to come down to help you. Just hold on. Sheridan, look on. out! Sheridan, no! Hold on! I'll call very soon and let you know every detail. Excellent. In the meantime, enjoy your reward. I wouldn't mind hearing every detail about that, too. <laughs> Maybe I should go and find Whitney. Why don't you give her a few moments to be alone? Chad, you know, we both know that I haven't always been your biggest fan. There are times I, I thought that you weren't right for Whitney. But I was wrong. You're a fine, upstanding young man. And I think you'll be very good for Whitney. Well, that means a lot coming from you, Dr. Russell. And I hope you two reconcile one day. You know, it kills me to see her walk away from you when I do anything to find my birth parents, you know, whoever they are. You know, she probably just needs a little time. Thank you, Chad. Yeah. If there's uh, anything you need, anything at all, feel free to come to me, or um, to us. Oh, you've already been so generous. I mean, let me stay at the Crane Recording Studio. <laughs> That's the least I could do. Uh, and I would hope that we could all become good friends. Well, I'd like that, Mr. Crane. So would I. <laughs> okay. I know you. I know what you're capable of. And I want the truth. How did you become pregnant with two babies? I don't know what you're talking about. Why does everyone keep blaming me? You know what? What you and Gwen think I'm up to, and I don't care. I'm just trying to carry these babies to term so I can get little Ethan back. That's all. Oh, my God. 
the night of the Founders' Day dance. Gwen wasn't there. I was drunk, but I remember she wasn't there. It was you. In a blonde wig, it was you. It was you that I made love to. Whitney, wait. I have to talk to you. There's nothing left to say, Fox. I'm marrying Chad, and I don't want to have anything else to do with you. Look, I, I know that you've been through a lot, and, and there's probably more. I can help. Chad can help me if I need help, okay? Chad cannot help. I can. You are so full of yourself. Do you know that? I mean, you're just like your father and your grandfather. There's nothing Chad can't help me with, okay? And there's nothing you can say that's going to change my mind about that. Do you understand me? Look, yes, there is. It may not only change your mind, it'll change your life. Will you give it a rest, please? Okay, I've been through enough today, and I'm not going to marry you. I'm going to marry Chad. I'm going to be his wife. You can't. He's your brother. Mr. Wheeler, she's barely breathing. There's nothing else we can do. You and I both know we had sex. I know it. You're lying, Fox. Chad isn't my brother. You're lying to me.